Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to, but I will deliver lecture in English. I will take out my mask. And here, as I think that rather clear space, that's why you also can a little bit take out your masks. Okay, it's very good, especially you are very beautiful. Вот я два-три слова скажу по-русски. Здесь ведь по-русски понимают или нет? Да. Понимаете? Deliver lecture in English или я буду говорить по-русски? In English will be better. Okay, my friends. Садарбек, это какой курс? Первый. И третий, да? Третий, вы понимаете? Какие страны здесь? Which countries here? А? Либия. А, Египет. Египет. Египет, Ирак. Окей. Марокко. И, значит, здесь нет Индии. Oh, my friend, unfortunately, no India, because I like India very much, because I delivered, uh, but uh, because I conducted a lot of expedition in India, and Indian people very, very under the God, and uh, that's why they understand me very good. Ну что, я тогда перехожу на английский язык. That's why I change my language into English, my friends. And you know that today for you, because you only came here to our university to have the education, but I will give you first of all very ex exciting lecture. A lecture about first experience first experience of the eye transplantation in the world. And I conducted such operation, first experience, but do you understand, I think so, that transplant the heart, not so difficult, transplant the liver, kidney, not so much difficult, but transplant the eye, wow, my God. It's unbelievable. I remember very good, my friends, that after the operation came here, CNN, TV, BBC, TV, and a lot of, a lot of French, German, uh, Finland, and other kinds of TV, because it was unbelievable. Russian in Russia performed first experience of the eye transplantation. And this lecture for you will be a little bit difficult for understanding, my friends. But nevertheless, I would like to say you, but this lecture will give you a little bit approaches, a little bit approaches regarding that in the medicine can be not only practice, but also miracles, real miracles. You are very, everybody, young man. You are a very beautiful young girl and so on and so on from Egypt, yeah? And you know that, <laughs> and you know that here, if you will a little bit believe to the miracles, it will be good for your future practice. Because you know that now I consulted, I came a little bit, I was a long time, I consulted patients from many, many countries, including Mongolia. Mongolia is a very wild country and very far, and you know that patients also from Mongolia came here. 
But you know that I consulted today patients from Arabic countries, Saudi Arabia first of all, and so on. And you know that I was really very surprised during the consultation of patients from Saudi Arabia that there are not one case. A lot of drunkards, they are drink vodka, but way they found find in Saudi Arabia, vodka is really unbelievable. Methylene spirits, and you know that toxical optic nerve atrophy, and so on, so on, so on. And tomorrow I will operate this patient from Saudi Arabia with toxical methylene alcohol of to the optic nerves. And you know that. First of all, I would like to say you a little bit add. This my main invention it is all a plant biomaterial. I think that you know, you heard about that. All a plant biomaterial. We're producing all a plant biomaterial from human cadaver tissues. Cadaver. You understand cadaver? It's dead human tissues, dead body, which we take from the mortuary, from the morgue. And you know that we change the quality, we change the quality of the human dead tissues to the create into the tissues the viscous water. Remember, please, viscous water, because because you know that the human body has the content approximately 90% is the water. We understand not only our tendons, not only our muscles and so on, but 90% our content is the water. And I would like to say you, I have a lot of a lot of expeditions in different miracle places of all of the world, and you know that once in Himalaya during my third Himalayan expedition, we found in India, space and Tibet, space, the samadhi states in Indian language it will be samadhi. But you know that we, in European languages, uh, call it like samadhi. Samadhi space, what is it? Because you know that the yogis, they going to the deep caves, to the deep, deep caverns, and you know that they have then meditation meditation and during this meditation they only yogis achieve the change of them normal liquid water in the body to the viscous water but you, you understand that we have three but we know that three stages three maybe but you know states of the water that is liquid water hard water that is the eyes and you know that uh, gas water that is this stream and you know that but exist by ancient indian and tibetan legends exist viscous water. What is the viscous water, my friends? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And I would like to say you that by Indian legends, very ancient Indian and Tibetan legends, viscous water, that means the water of the deathless. That is, the human being have changed 
his water to the deathless water. That's why the life can continue a very, very long time, thousand million years and more. That means deathless. And you know that I'm like inventor of the Laplant biomaterial can say you. We, during the chemical treatment of the dead cadaver tissues, we changed the water to the viscous state. And this viscous water gave absolutely miracle results. But you know that this biomaterial will be accepted with the foreign body like normal, without rejection, without uh, immune reaction. Absolutely everything is normal. And especially, which is very important, on the place of the Alloplant biomaterial, we call such kind of material with the viscous water like alloplant. Allo from the Greek language will be like, uh, will be translated like alien. But uh, you know that plant from English language will be also plant. And here, that's why we have very big success. We can grow up normal human tissues. On the place of one type of a plant can grow the connective few tissue. On the place of other can grow blood vessels, can grow, grow nervous, can grow brain tissue, retina, and so on, so on. That's why we have here very big, very big success in all over the world. Only today I consulted and tomorrow I will operate them, patients from plenty, plenty of countries of all over the world. Because our center is calling in many, many languages like center of the last hope. Because it's regenerative medicine, a medicine which is, can grow up the normal human tissues. And you know that, because we know how to grow up the normal human tissues, I thought many years ago, maybe will be possible to grow up not only the tissues but also the organ. For instance, the eyeball. The center is mostly the eye surgery center. That's why the title of my just a minute of my lecture it is the first experience of the eye transplantation. Next slide. But you know that clinical indications for the eye transplantation that are phthisis bulby, that is shrinkage of the eyeball, atrophy of the eyeball, anaphthalmus, and you know that you can see here the atrophic piece of the eyeball. Next slide. Patient Tamara Gorbachova, do you remember the former president of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, the same surname, from Ukraine, from Ukraine, from Kiev city, before the operation but you know that small piece of the eyeball and post-operatively after the operation the new format eyeball. On January 2000 year we had the first experience of the eye transplantation in all of the world. The operation was performed in the our Russian Plastic Surgery Center 
It is follow up after the operation. Next slide. Theoretical indications for the eye transplantation. But you know that first my thinking it was alloplant induced histogenesis. Histogenesis that, that is stimulation of the growing of the tissues. But I thought is the induction of the organogenesis will be possible. That means maybe will be possible to stimulate the regeneration, not only the tissues, but also the organs. Next slide. And you know that we know very well what means stem cells. It is electronic microscopy of the stem cells. Alloplant may uh, material gather around him. This is alloplant. Plenty of <clears throat> plenty of stem cells, but stem cells can be adult stem cells and can be embryonal stem cells. Embryonal stem cells can be totipotential. Totipotential that means one stem cells can stimulate the growing of the whole organism, of the whole body. But pluripotential, that means stem cells will stimulate the organ. And you know that, in the, I thought that in the adult body there is possible preserved a pool of pluripotential embryonal stem cells capable to induce organogenesis. That means maybe pluripotential stem cells can be live in the human body and they will stimulate the regeneration of the whole organ. Next slide. And look please, we started our investigations from <clears throat> the jaw surgery, jaw surgery. Look please, change of the jaw surgery to the another type, from the dead human tissue. But this jaw surgery, look please, was surrounded, was surrounded by alloplant biomaterial. And I would like you should remember, alloplant stop the immune reaction. Alloplant don't give the possibility to attack the dead human tissues. Next slide. But you know that. And we understand that alloplant can be like protecting tissue, protection to prevent the tissue rejection. And you know that's why we surround the transplanted tissue with the alloplant biomaterial. It's very important, my friends. Because you know that alloplant is protecting immune reaction. And that's why the alien human tissue can be revived. Next slide. And you know that experimental morphological researches. And you know that we take out from the cadaver, from the rabbit, eyeball, uh, we take out uh, the retina, choroid, and vitreous body, take out. And you know that change this all vitro-retinal complex with the foreign retro, uh, vitreal, but Choroidal uh, retinal vitreal complex. Next slide. And look, please. 
without surrounding with the alloplant. In one month after the operation, we can see the pieces of dead retinal necrosis, fibrosis, fibrosis, dead retina, retina, choroid and vitreous are dying. It's the result of the acute immune inflammation. It is control group. Next slide. Then, but you know that our experimental theory, transplantation of the retina vitreal complex coated by alloplant. Alloplant protecting acute immune reaction. Look please, vitreoretinal complex surrounded with the alloplant. Next slide. In one month, after one month after the operation, but you know, you can see here, this one is alloplant. Look please, alloplant. Choroid is normal. Retina is normal. It is histological section. Everything is very good. Next slide. Then, in one month, nissle stain, nissle stain, that means we can see the alive neural cells. And you know that we could see here that retina is alive after the coating, after the protection of the alloplant biomaterial. Next slide. Viscous water. One more in one month, optic nerve, optic nerve also alive. Next slide. Then in one month after the operation, we can see the ingrowing into the transplant, the blood vessels, a lot of blood vessels to have the nourishment, to have the nutrition. Next slide. In two months after the operation, we can see surviving cells of the retina. Surviving, but they feel a little bit immune reaction, but not so much. They are surviving. Next slide. In four months, we can see, I was very surprised, the indices of the regeneration of the pigmental epithelium and of the neurons. It's only not only immune reaction, but you know that also here stimulation of the regeneration. Next slide. In four months, we can see also nissel stain, regeneration of the retinal cells. That retina is growing up. Next slide. In seven months after the operation, forming of the ciliar body and regeneration of the retina and choroid. That means during this experiment, with the coating of the transplanted eyeball, main eyeball tissues, we can achieve, we can achieve not only saving the retina, choroid and vitreous, but also we could see principal the could see the signs of the regeneration that is growing new retina, new vitreous body, new choroid. Next slide. In seven months, you can see also the principles of the retina regeneration. It is nissle stains, it is special stains for the alive neurons. Next slide. I was very amazing, amazing. 
They transplanted chorioretina vitreal complex, coated by a la plant, is capable not only to survive, but also for regenerate as well. That is going stimulation of the regeneration. Next slide. <coughs> Stages of the eye transplantation. I made these operations. The length of the operation was 6.5 hours. It's very long time, my friends. But you know that it's very extremely complicated operation. Cutting of the donor cornea. Next slide. Then separating of the donor retina. Next slide. Separated donor retina on the spatial plant. Next slide. Then removal of the calcinate from the atrophic eye. And you know that I removed this one and you can see here the eyeball, atrophic eyeball with removed uh, calcinate. Next slide. Then formation of the eye posterior frame, carcass, from dense and thick alloplant. Look please, look please here. To protect transplanted retina, choroid, and so on, so on, from the immune attack. Next slide. The, all, uh, the eye posterior frame has been made. Next slide. And I thought that will be necessary to bring a little bit tenon capsule into the eye because to improve the blood supply. Next slide. And look, please, here. But you know that protecting alloplant plays it into the posterior cavity. But you know that in the external part exists alloplant to protect of immune reaction. And into the new forming eyeball, also one more protecting alloplant. Next slide. And you, you can see protecting alloplant, which is fixed. Next slide. Then transplantation fixation of the donor cornea. I put there donor cornea and with plenty of sutures, I fixed this transplant. Next slide. And you can see here with vitreous body fixed retinal allotransplant. Oh my friends, it was very difficult procedure because the retina is very thin. But you know that it was possible, uh, fortunately my hands working good. And I, uh, I won the competition of the eye surgeon of the American continent. And you know that we are the, I, we had the competition with American surgeons, Argentinian surgeons, and so on, so on. But it was it was possible to win. And next slide. Then placing of the donor cornea, donor cornea. Next slide. And you can see in the picture that fixed donor cornea. I didn't make the iris. Next slide. And then first anterior frame, first anterior carcass. You can see with the use also with the Laplant. Almost everywhere, everywhere, protecting a Laplant to stop the immune reaction, my friends. It was main my idea during the Allah transplantation. Because it's impossible, because regarding the immune reaction, the eyeball is first, first. But you know that if you will transplant the piece of the eyeball to your body, it will be rejected. 
That's why it's unbelievable. Next slide. And you know that governing Aloplan by conjunctiva. Next slide. And in the, but insertion of the gel like Aloplan. It is special Aloplan. It is viscous Aloplan by the way. Do you remember I told you? And a la plant, main essence of the a la plant, that is uh, the viscous water. And I inserted in the, the, the eyeball special gel-like viscous a la plant. Next slide. And you can see here new made, new format eyeball. On the place of atrophic calcinate. Next slide. Third day of the operation. Everything is very good, but what is it? Phantom of the iris. A little bit red. I thought that is uh, the bleeding. Next slide. But you know that five day of the strange red spot here. Next slide. But seventh day after the operation, when came the BBC TV and so on, it was it's a very miracle. And you know that. What is it? The eyeball became absolutely red. I thought maybe it is bleeding. But it was just the appalization, appalization, appalescence. It was just the appalachian, red color. Why red color? But remember, please, but you know that in the Oriental, in the Eastern religions, exist five elements. Fifth element, it is the love. But first, first element, it is red color element, the fire. Second, element, it is the earth, yellow. Third, that is green element, that means the ether. And uh, the other, it is water, that means blue. And you know that, I understood that here appeared the miracles. The first elements begin, began to work. Next slide. And you know that eight day after the operation also continue the red appalescence next next slide. And you know that immunological investigations, no immune reaction. Next slide. And you know that ninth day after the operation continue of the Right, appalescence. Next slide. Sixteen days after the operations, appeared the orange appalescence. I was really very surprised. I didn't believe, didn't believe that it's the appalescence of the miracle five elements. Next slide. Then. A period strange yellow spot, next slide, and then appeared the yellow appalescence, next slide. One more, what is it? Bright yellow appalescence. I never can see red or yellow eyeballs. It was a miracle, my friends. I was very surprised. I'm every day perform operations. I'm not a Tibetan Lama or like this because you know that my work it is to operate the patients. But I was very surprised, my friends. How? Yellow. Nobody can see. Red eyeball, yellow eyeball, and so on. Next slide. And then one more immunological investigations, no immune reaction. Next slide. 
Continue of the bright yellow opalescence. Next slide. 30 days after the operations, continue of the bright of the yellow opalescence. Next slide. And you can see here also yellow. Next slide. And then, what is it? I didn't make the pipola and I didn't make the iris because I thought it's enough. Too long is continuing the operation. But you know that what is phantom of the iris? I think so. Energetical, energetical influence. Next slide. And then in 46 days after the operation, appeared the marginal ulceration. I was very sad because I thought it will be finished. Because the eyeball, new format eyeball, is not alive yet. And, uh, well, I think it will be finished. It is ulceration. But, next slide. Then, preservation of the yellow opalescence and you know that change of the form of the cornea. Next slide. Then, what is it? Cornea retraction, but cornea retraction inter into the eyeball, cornea retraction. But you know that the eyeball, the size uh, was saved, but you know that cornea retraction to backside. I was really very surprised. Next slide. Then continue of the cornea retraction. Next slide. One more corneal retraction, continue, next slide. That is, the eyeball is going back, back, is going back. And you know that we can see vascularization of the ocular cup, appeared the ocular cup, like in embryogenesis. Next slide. And you can see here, in 120 days, ocular cup. It was unbelievable, like during the embryogenesis. In the embryogenesis, we can what means ocular cup, that is the eyeball cup. And then from the ocular cup is going ahead and will be formed the eyeball. I understood that is going the process in the adult human body of the embryogenesis of the eyeball. Next slide. And 150 days maximum invagination of the ocular cup. Next slide. And then everything begin to go ahead, begin to go ahead. And we can see flattering of the ocular cup. Next slide. And you know that we can see the prototype of the Schlem's channel. Canal. Next slide. And then we can see the lens formation, that is crystalline formation, is going the embryogenesis of the eyeball. Next slide. And you know that then in two years after the operation is growing the lens. Next slide. And my hypothesis of the organogenesis induction as per embryo type. Next slide. And look please. Mesenchyma, neuroectoderma, superficial ectoderma. Next slide. 
And you know that neuroectoderma is forming the ocular cup and is going here the separation of the crystalline, that means lens, next slide, and then will go the formation of the retina from mesoderm, next slide. And I thought, oh my God, I thought that time, if I will perform during the operation also the iris with the pupilla, it will be better. Because retina went down, went down, or oh yeah, cornea went down, but in such case, can go down, down only the iris. It was my mistake. But you know that nevertheless, next slide. In one year after the operation, appeared the arteria hyloide, that is formation of the eyeball. Next slide. Then I performed the levator shortening surgery for her and I found absolutely unusual, absolutely unusual vorticus veins. Next slide. And you know that visual acuity of such eye. Look please, in one year after the operation, 0,005%. That means 0,5% of the vision. The human being with so low level can walk himself, can reading difficult, but can walk. In two years, 0.2%. In three years, 0.4%. But in four years, 1% of vision. 1% of vision, that means the patient can see letters, can see walk, can recognize the faces, and so on. In five years, 2%, in six years, 4%, in seven years, 7%. 7% is rather good vision, my friends. Next slide. Visual fields appeared, next slide, next slide, and also visual fields, next slide, and appeared electroretinogram, that means grow up, grow up the new retina, electroretinogram, ERG, that means manifestation that retina is working, new retina is working. Next slide. And registration of the evoked potential showed approximately 10% of vision. Next slide. Thank you very much, but now I will your Arabic man. Now we will show you one video. All the time, I call Tamara. Tamara Gorbacheva, she speaks English very well. And I will ask her, Tamara, please go to that room, find with your new eye, with your new vision, and find there one patient blind patient and bring for me for the consultation. Tamara told me yes and go there. And now you will see how patient from Saudi Arabia, it is Arabic patient, he spoke English. Tamara go there and how Tamara with the new eye bring this patient to me for the surgeon, for the consultation, 
of the absolutely hopeless, absolutely incurable, patient Arabic patient. Давай. Here will be very beautiful music, baby. 